everybody, I am Nico D, today I'm gonna show you all how to install and set up Kali Linux on the Raspberry Pi 4. Kali Linux is a Debian based Linux distro that is aimed on network security. It is mostly used by white hat hackers, network admins and even black hat hackers. It is mainly used to test vulnerabilities and networks and internet applications. This isn't for everybody, this isn't really for a beginner. A lot of things you have to set up yourself, it isn't as straightforward as most other Linux distros to set up everything, but it is just Linux, so you can use it as a desktop, it uses XFCE4, so that looks a lot better than Pixel from Raspbian, but it isn't aimed at desktop use. If you are not handy with the terminal, then I would not advise to use Kali Linux. I'm also gonna show you how to install it onto an USB device or SSD. I am no network specialist, I am not gonna show you how to use the network tools, I'm just gonna show how to install it. So here we go! The first thing we have to do is of course download Kali Linux, so for that I type in Kali Linux Raspberry Pi 4 download, and here it is. So we go down, and up a bit, so try it out, let's go there. And here we search for the Raspberry Pi Foundation, there it is. And here are the download links. So only the 32-bit works for the Raspberry Pi 4 until now. There's also a 64-bit that works with the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3, but not with the Raspberry Pi 4 for now. So we will download the one for the Raspberry Pi 4, 32-bit. So it's a torrent, so just use uTorrent to download it. So now I first format my SD card. It's an SD card of 16 gigabytes. It's better to use a smaller size of 16 gigabytes if you want to run it also on an SSD or an USB device. Because I am going to clone this and the bigger it is, the longer it will take. So I use SD formatter to format it. And now Win32 Disk Imager to flash it to my SD card. So Kali Linux. Here it is. Okay, now write. This will take a long time. Now we plug the SD card into our Raspberry Pi 4 and we boot it. The first boot will take some time, just let it do. So when we come to the login screen, the login name is root and the password is tour. So just root in reverse. So I choose a default config and first I connect my Wi-Fi. And then the first thing I do is change the root password because it is a security risk to have a default password. So to change your password just type in passwd and two times type in your new password. Now we must create a user because it's not good to use the root user. So for that we type in all this and change Nico D with your username. Again two times a new password. Your full name, your room number, your work phone. That's all not necessary. Okay, so the user is created. Now we have to give that user pseudo rights. So for that type in all this. Again replace Nico D with your username. Now Nico pseudo is not needed, we are the root user. Now that is done, we can reboot. So once rebooted, we log in with Nico D, or your username of course, and my password. And again use the default config, because it's a new user. So now we have to do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. So it's just a Debian derived distro, so it's all just the same as in Debian. Now that's ready, I install my favorite text editor, so genie, sudo apt install genie. 
Now I will configure it to boot from an SSD. So I open Genie, sudo Genie. Then I open boot and their command line. Only do this if you want to boot from your USB device. If you want to run Kali Linux from your SD card, then just ignore this part. There we replace the root part with this. And now shut down the Raspberry Pi. Now we are gonna clone the SD card onto the SSD. So here I am in Windows, I've plugged in the SD card. So as you see the F drive is my Raspberry Pi SD card. So now I open Win32 Disk Imager. I choose the F drive and here I type in the name of the image I want. Don't forget to also add .img, I forgot this over here, I will have to add it later on. Then just click read and this will take a long time for me, so I've got time to play guitar. Once that is done I plug out my SD card and plug in my SSD. So here the G is my SSD. I again open Win32 Disk Imager. I select the G drive and I go to where I've saved my image. So there is my image and now I click write. Yes, this will be a little bit faster because it's an SSD instead of an SD card. So a small recap. In command line .txt from the SD card we have pointed the root towards the second partition of the SSD, SDA2. Now we have cloned the SD card onto our SSD. So it will first boot from the SD card, but once it sees the root point to SDA2, then it will try to boot from the SSD. So now we can boot from the SSD or whatever external device you are using. Now that is done, I plug in my SD card and also my SSD and I boot the Raspberry Pi 4. So sometimes it will not boot from the SSD. It is a problem with the Raspberry Pi, it is like this with every distro. About 50% of the times it does boot right. So I am using my USB 3 to SATA adapter for my SSD. So now we just log in with the login credentials we have made. If I go look at the file system here, I see there is only 9GB free disk space. So this is not normal with a 200GB SSD. So to fix that we need to install gparted. So sudo apt install gparted. Then we open gparted, so sudo gparted. We select the right drive, so SDA. So this is my partition, I have to resize it. I will do it to the maximum size. OK. Now click this button. Apply. OK. That's done. Now if we again go check the disk size, then we see there is 200 gigabytes free. So that's another problem that's fixed. Now on to the next problem. Now I will change the pointer in command line.txt for root to the user ID from the SSD instead of SDA2. This is because when you are using other external devices it can happen that the other device is called SDA2 and then it will not boot. So it is best to use the user ID from the SSD. So I open gpart just to see the name of my SD card to mount the boot partition so we can change the command line.txt file. So I open a new terminal. So I create a folder in the mount directory. So sudo make directory slash mount slash boot sd. Ok. And now just sudo mount slash dev slash the name of the SD card, it's first partition. So that is it. And then slash mount slash boot SD. 
If we now go to the mount directory then we see the boot partition of the SD card. So here we can adjust the command line.txt file with the part user ID. So to get the part user ID you type in sudo bulk ID. Now here we see sd2 and over here is the part user ID. So that's what we need. So copy and now open genie. Again open a new terminal, sudo genie. And we drag the command line.txt file into genie. And we replace a slash def slash sda2 with part uuid equals and then the user id of your device. Then you save and you can reboot. It is not done yet, now we have got to make fstab point to the right partitions. So we open genie again and we can do bulk id to see the user ids from our drives. Then we go to our file system, there etc. And there fstab. Here you see it is pointing towards the SD card. So we will again change that to the part user ID of our SSD. So the first one boot is here my SDB1. So I copy the user ID of that and put parts UUID equals the part user ID. And I do the same for the second drive. And we save that. So now all the configuration for the SSD has been done. It was a lot and it was very boring. I'm sorry for that. From now on the SD card users can follow again. To completely install Kali Linux we type in sudo apt install kali-linux-full. This will install a lot more tools. Now we can check the desktop capabilities of Kali Linux. So let's open Firefox. And watch YouTube. Oh no, another problem. So the time isn't set right. So to set the time right we use this command. And then we can surf the internet. So let's go to NicoD and see how well YouTube performs. So my latest video, build your own Armbian image. If you haven't seen it yet, please watch it. So first let's put it onto 720p full screen. So I am in 1080p with my display resolution. So 720p plays great, there is no stuttering, it just plays very well. Zero dropped frames, but if we put it to 1080p, then we start seeing some stuttering. Does play okay, but not good enough. And of course 1440p is a lot worse.
Now the video playback with VLC. I have installed VLC, there was no video player installed. So at first it doesn't seem okay, but we have to change the settings. So we go to preferences, there to video. There we choose for output X11. We save that and we restart VLC and now you will see it plays perfect. So it plays up to 1440p 30 frames, also 1080p 60 frames but no 4K. Now one last thing, a look at all the security programs that were installed. So there's a lot of things, but as much security programs there are installed, there are almost no desktop programs installed. So you have to install everything yourself if you want to use this as a desktop. For me it is better than Raspbian to use, because I don't like Raspbian, but this is of course not for everybody. I've already investigated Manjaro Linux, this is a lot better for a normal user. So that's my conclusion, it's not for everybody, but it is a very nice distro. But you must be able to work with Linux to be able to configure everything right. So that's it for today, thank you all for watching, I hope you liked my video, please subscribe to my channel, see you all later, bye!